So this is the waffle part of the show. Um, Hello. We're all back. It's uh, it, This is like two weeks late. Yeah, well, we At were meant to record a couple of weeks ago, but then we were in Manchester. You were, you were a problem and then you were a problem. Well, we were both a problem in Manchester. We were both there. Oh, actually. yeah. And then... Handling. The week after... That sounds really inappropriate when you think it does, about it. doesn't it? Yeah. Handling. Handling what? athletes. Dog handlers. Yeah. It, to be it's fair, cops. on the day, you could argue. You could. It was a bit feral. Oh, th- I'm going to be honest with you, the smell in that room. So this was a powerlifting <laughs> meet. What, they're supposed to be a bit dull, aren't they? I'm not going to lie. It was a very full-on... This Because we were very involved. Yeah, I think yeah. if you were spectating... It's it, a long day. Like, no disrespect mm. to powerlifting. Like, very impressive. But it's not a spectator sport, is it? No. It's really not. It's a long day of people doing some heavy lifts. But and it, eventually you're a bit like... Phew. It was the Nationals, though. So, yeah. you know... Kind of a big deal. We got we got a few people into Worlds. Yeah, that's September. pretty cool. September. Well done. Yes. Well done to all those involved, I'd like to say. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Was, and well was, done to you two for playing your part in that. We farted a lot. I'm not going to lie. The smells that we smelt on the Thursday were not gone by the Sunday. And they were all, and they were all Harry. <laughs> Honestly, they were all Harry. there are certain individuals, I know them personally, and they walked past me. I was thinking, you know what, you've been here for a while. Crop dusting. Honestly, I, there were some smells, and I'm thinking, it might be me. It might be me. You've come tooled up with some snacks today. You're planning on eating during the show. Are you that yes, concerned about calories? Because I have also, to eat a lot of food. I, I think the bananas will be fine on the mic. I'm a bit more concerned I'm about gonna, the Rice Krispie squares. Got some f- protein fiber ones. Is that a thing? Surely they taste horrendous. They're right. The yeah. normal fiber ones are actually okay. That will come out the same way it goes in. 90 yeah. calories each, and there are 10 grams of protein, so two of those is 100. Too well, fair. Do the, the math. On the way back from Manchester, because you know I told you I wasn't feeling too juicy after the three yeah, fried yeah. chickens in a day, I got a box of five one and just ate it on the way home from Manchester, just hoping for the best. Yeah. And, clog uh, me up. <laughs> yeah, I literally, I was just feeling... I was Why feeling, don't you clog me <laughs> up? I was feeling very fragile. Uh, I didn't eat one of the days. On the national day, I literally barely ate because I, so, I was so fragile. On Thursday, I drove up to Manchester and drove back on the same day. I don't know how you did that. I honestly. don't know. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep for about two hours on the way home. I was on my own, by the way. You should have said, because I would have... If you should have said, because I would have just driven your car home. I'm insured on all cars. All, all cars. Like, I'm well, insured like, on all cars. <laughs> I'm insured because then I'm You see the Queen's car? The Queen's car? I can drive the Queen's car. Probably better than she could. Just want to clarify. Better, th- better than her ex-husband. I say yeah. ex, that's not really Didn't he right. flip the Range Rover or something? He's, yeah, yeah, he's we've all done it. We've, he, all, done we've it. all been there. <laughs> he flipped reversed that bad boy. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, you should have said I would have just driven your car. That's fine. Hardcore coach brum, brum. situation. What litre is it? It's two litre, mate. Oh, we have a great time. Yeah, Turbo we'll Diesel. Hit you up. Mm. Is that your nickname? Turbo Diesel? Uh, I think my nickname is probably a lot worse than that. It's not very pleasant. <laughs> Good. Although my mum does call me Slippery Sausage, as we do now. Yeah. <laughs> Good. 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 Um, um, what else has happened? Oh, I did my 10K run. London, oh, yeah, I saw that. The, Lon- the London 10K. Was it on a very hot day? Mate, it was fucking roasting. Um, fortunately, because um, we were one of the faster groups, we went off quite early. So the run started at 9.30, so not too hot at that time. It was about 22 degrees. In fairness to Chris, for the first time, I will say, you know what, your sunnies are a good shout. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for the thank first you. time, I'll actually wow. back it. Not giving me shit for having all the gear and no idea for no, it. For nah. the first time, the one sunny day in England, he, he came through there. Yeah, they were good sunglasses, to be fair. Although my headphones stopped fucking working as I crossed the start line, which was really annoying. I don't Gosh, even know why. You go back. Oh, Just turn around. No. And do it. <laughs> Guys, can we do this another day? I, I spent like punch. I spent like an hour like that previous day putting a playlist together that would keep me totally pumped and jacked for this run. And then so, that, so the first song kicks in as I'm crossing the start line. I'm like, yeah, this is fucking awesome and then bloop it's gone it's like what the actual fuck just playing out your phone just yeah it's just one of those people yeah <laughs> just have, have the wife running alongside you with a boom box the cra- like, the bluetooth cr- bluetooth closer the crowd was actually really good though so that was kind of I don't, you don't really need headphones for a big event like that it's only if you just but it re- does make it easier i don't know yeah I'm, I'm one of these people that music has a massive effect on mm, like a yeah. really good song can just give you a boost of something resources i don't know how we're getting a flow state i'm maybe. sure there's definitely like some research supporting like music and its ability to uh, like regulate emotion slightly like yeah. if you're there is some research that. around music and exercise <laughs> performance I yeah, don't, no, know, I don't know how like the validity of it but they have looked at it but I think ultimately it comes down to your Euphoria ability to state. essentially psychologically zone in mm, whether, yeah, like, whether you need music or that for that or not it's it enhances like, I can't really get too hyped without music yeah same but if you have music and it hypes you up it's just an aid to unlock what you needed to yeah, unlock yeah. yeah don't you I remember you saying that when you're on if you do a deload week, you can't listen to hype music because yeah. otherwise you just want to go lift heavy. Well, it's, it's, well, my coach's theory was it's a, like almost like additional CNS recovery 
where you're just not getting hyped. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's like psychological. Recovery. Yeah, yeah, I, I get mean, it. There might be something in that, to be fair. Well, like, and even before like big PRs, like if I was doing like the powerlifting days, I had a little routine of I would listen to poetry, spoken word poetry, on the way to the gym. You get zend, yeah. and then when I was warming up, I listened to really sad songs, like horrendous songs about horrible things. And then when <laughs> it was actually go time for like the fast last two or three warm ups, I'd be like, Bleh. all around me. Oh, worse than that, I'll talk about <laughs> songs that I would probably play at my funeral. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've got some songs lined up for mine. I know the song I want to play at my funeral. Is it Lorna Shaw? No, it's Day is Gone by Noah Gunderson. You know, I've seen, seen Noah Gunderson live. Oh, he ben, is so ben, good. He walked past me. So I was stood by the bar yeah. and he walked past me to get on stage and it was one of these double takes. You're like, oh, that guy looks like, that guy is Noah Gunderson. <laughs> and I was like, touch me, please. I like your music. I only know him from Sons of Anarchy. You've seen Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Oh, great series. Yeah. But it's like, I don't want to say it because in case no one's yeah, seen it. Yeah, don't say it. But when someone... The, when that thing happens Yeah, the she's thing, on the kitchen and floor. The song and the, then I was like, oh, this is sad. Yeah. I love it. You know um, the, the mum from Sons of Anarchy? You know the one? Yeah. Clay's wife. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she it just sings a lot of the songs. Is it Clay? It must be Clay. It's Clay, isn't it? I, I'm really asking um, the wrong person. She sings a lot of the songs. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's a country singer. Talented. Do you remember the program Tucker? You you must remember Tucker years ago. Okay. Give I us mean, a synopsis. Well, Grange Hill. <laughs> no, it, it had it was like Seth Bunker. Green. You know Seth Grove. Green. <laughs> you remember Seth Green? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. his one of his first TV appearances where he played himself. As, he plays himself in most. Yeah, things, and this he? is like the yeah, first yeah. time he did. This was like a nineties program, oh, very Tucker. vague. Very yeah, vague. and um, was it was Tucker the one where? No, I'm thinking about the other one where he ate the burger that was under the bed for six months and died. That's another one. That isn't that oh, a TV show yeah, um, on um, same era though on Disney. Yeah, classic. Um, Teen Angel. Yes, that was also Hang very on, good. Didn't we discuss Teen Angel in like, oh, one so of the we early have before, but, but, but Tucker is the one sh- that she's in it. She's Tucker's mum or auntie or something. Chris has lost his mind now. Um, <laughs> it's good. It was very good. And there was, there was a I've scene, missed this. The scene yeah. where he's wearing a, a t-shirt with a rabbit smoky a joint and then he masks it as a rabbit sucking up poop through a straw so he could wear it to school. I remember that very well. It was a blue t-shirt with a white rabbit. Good. I remember some irrelevant things. I mean, that's the foundation of this podcast. Yeah. Hello. I missed, you all. I missed um, you all. But yeah, what anything else happened before we get on with the, the the stuff? I can't think really. Did we ever air that other podcast that we did? No, not so we, we redid it. So we, so I passed my prescript course. I'm yeah, we, sure. we had that. We had that in the last show. We yeah, did. Oh. So we, remember we redid it. We had that. That was. I on, that's have. On the, mental problems that's on the what, youtube you, machine what michael do we have today you've been very preoccupied of late he's busy i have a busy brain but i'm present in the moment he's very he's in the moment that's yeah. good this, is, a, this has been probably the best bit of my week oh, so you have nice. a fantastic hairline so i was just acknowledging you have a fantastic i hairline. did accidentally i don't know how much you shaved shave some of it wow. by accident I can, yeah, I can you see, see it there why, a little bit of stubble why would you do that i don't know what i was doing why are you shaving, shaving your, forehead? your forehead no i don't know i was i was doing the eyebrow bit here no, don't shave it. You pluck it. No, no, no. That I don't have time for that. I just easy. I'll to pluck sweep. it for you. Okay, we'll do that later. <laughs> okay, that's that's the next episode. Really <laughs> you can just get me in like a dentist chair. And Although Harry just... has lost the whole manscaping deal now, so there's we, you know we don't have. Why well, didn't lose that. any deal? It was never a deal. Yeah, I was say, you so can't lose a, something you never had. Here's a, here's a free thing. Just talk about us once, and we'll be happy. Yeah, they said we'll give you money and some products. And in fairness, they did you, deliver. They did deliver, and I'm still using the products. Is the is the thing any good? Is it called lawnmower? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, it's pretty decent. I'm going to be honest with you. They, I know they're little sneaky snakes. Um, they're not really. But in the thing, <laughs> they say you can't uh, say that it's actually no, no nick. It just reduces the chances of nick. Well, yeah. Of course you can't. Yeah, it's because, like it, uh, but they claim that it's advertised as it is, but it's not. It basically it nicks. Does it, it not? Get? Not as a nick. I bet the ball sack is still tricky. I tried it once and it bled. Um, but that also might be my own fault. You've got to stretch that thing before yeah, you start trying might, to shave. So I just don't, I don't venture there. I go elsewhere. No. I reckon you could probably stretch yours back over your head. Yeah, probably. Over, but like, over when the back of a chair. When, and when it comes to like chest hair and stuff, <laughs> it's vroom, vroom, yeah. clean, smooth, uh, just, glide. Just razor in the shower, mate. It's all. No, I don't want to clear razor because I always look like I've got I don't know, something going on because I get really best yeah, shaving. You rash. Rash. You're yeah. a sensitive child. I've got very sensitive skin. Poor little slippery sausage is very sensitive. Is that a bad thing? That's a great question for another episode. No, absolutely not. What, what, what having sensitive skin or being sensitive in general? I just like. Well, I wasn't going either of those places. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with sensitivity. Let's go with the first one. What's Please your controller sign. sensitivity on Call of Duty? That's what we're talking about. Oh, actually, I couldn't I'm tell you. Anymore. I've not played that for some time. Although I threw my controller so much in rage, I did have to change the dead zone. 
Why are you angry with the controller? Because I got to let it out somewhere, guys. <laughs> so Mike's, oh, a, Mike's I, a very kind of calm, collected guy, but maybe gaming's where his true I, ang- angst oh, comes out. I've got a story. Oh, here we go. Right, set, got, settle in, guys. Sell, I've got a story. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know how to do this. All right, so basically, be me. This goes way back. Uh, I'm at my other gym. I'm not going to disclose where it is. Everyone already knows. And this is after the first lockdown when the gym's reopened. So I see this guy, and he's. I look at him, and he's got he's got some eyes, crazy eyes. I look at him and say, you've seen some things in your time. If you saw him, you'd know exactly yeah, what I yeah. mean. And he's in the gym. He's screaming. Lovely guy. I've come to a very nice guy. When you say screaming. Screaming the house down. Those 10 kilo dumbbell curls. <sighs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's in good shape. He's not, he's, pretty, like, he's not big, but he's pretty fucking shredded. He comes up to me. He goes, oh, you're right. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, bear in mind, we've never spoken before in our life. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, hello. I was like, yeah, yeah, not bad. I was like, how, how, how you found like the lockdown stuff? <laughs> it's, it's a simple question. Oh, I'm going to be honest with you. I find it really hard because obviously pandemic and obviously the gyms have closed. Yeah, I know it's really tough. He goes, yeah, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. The gym is where I, is my release. It's where I take my anger out. And if I can't take my anger out in the gym, I have to take it out on my wife. I was like, so I'm so I'm there still going. I was like, we're joking. I hope we're joking. I'm going to assume we're joking right now. So I'm there and I go, yeah, and obviously I find it really hard. So uh, to honest, if it happens again and you see murder on Sky News, you're a witness because I've told you I'm going to do it. I was like, oh, I said, like, we are joking. He is we? joking. I was we? like, we're joking, aren't we? Anyway, fast forward, I see him again a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if I ask you a question, I'll say, how are you? What's your response? Both of you. Just what would you say? If I, how, uh, how are you doing? I'm all right. Yeah. I, I tend to say I'm, I'm not bad yourself. Yeah. yeah no yeah. one, no it, one actually easy. wants to hear it no, when it's no, a bad no, thing. Of course an not. Easy, no. easy question. A very yeah. fair question. Not an extensive answer. Seconds. I see him. He goes, he gives me a lot. Oh, you're right. Simple question. So basically from that question, I got that. Uh, <laughs> he goes, yeah, honestly, I'm alive. That's all I can ask for. The pandemic has changed everyone. Honestly, global warming is going to kill the earth. All of us are going <laughs> to die. I'm not, I'm not even joking. I'm literally, I'm shooting up. All of us gonna die so but it's fine i'm not stressed about it because honestly back in the 70s 20 years ago i'm thinking your math is very off right there very where off. do you think you are right yeah now? Literally, he goes <laughs> football fields that 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 big full of hard drives goes to the moon i'm thinking okay now that's in your phone technology's changed the world and you're all worried about global warming and the earth burning but we're going to colonize mars in no time and i'm not stressed because i'm going to be on mars when everyone's worrying and i was just thinking i literally just asked how you doing and that's just i was like I didn't say in this whole conversation. I did not mutter a word. I just looked at him. I was like, "Wow, this is this is a story to tell." And then I said, oh, "Okay." He goes, "But you're right." I was like, "Yeah, I'm good. I better crack on now." See anyway, I'm gonna go back to the hack yeah. squat. So yeah. bye. Then, anyway, so, see yeah. him, <laughs> literally see him, see him the next day. How you doing? That that question much simpler answer at the time. He goes, "Honestly, the heat." I said, "Yeah, I quite like training the heat though." I was like, it makes, "It's like character building. It's like mental resilience. I quite like it. It's like toughness." He goes, "If you want to be strong." Nordic country move to Iceland he tells me he said honestly name me name me a strong person who comes from a hot country or name me a strong person that doesn't come from a Nordic country I was like well Eddie Hall comes from England I mean the current boss from, from England I was like oh yeah yeah great question great question obviously I know the answers I'm not gonna kind of go on to that because yeah so honestly we need to move I was like oh we're moving we're all moving Pack together bags boy Mars we're again though yeah, yeah <laughs> well, I, was, I was thinking I was like, why are you trying to go to another country if we're gonna go to Mars anyway very nice guy we have conversations every now and then I mean, again, get him on the show. Get him here. This I, is, this I is where we need him. I fear for the answer, but sure, why not? It's That'll an experience. <laughs> He's, uh, uh, honestly, every time, I hope he was joking about the wife thing because it gave me a bit of anxiety. But um, then he walked off and then, I love it, because he then wrapped his elbows to do car phrases. I'm, I don't think, I, I think a man like that, that you can't question that. No, but I respect it because he's, because yeah. I look at him and say, you not. Know you know when you look at someone and say, you know what? You don't even need correcting because you literally don't care what you're doing. You just love being here. Yeah. And I actually, he just, he comes in and you know, he's just in his zone. And every time we have a conversation, he, he's always polite. Every time I see him, he always nods. He shakes my hand. Very fair. If I ever need to jump an exercise, he's always like, hop on with me. Like very willing to share equipment. <laughs> I, but I, look just, him. I can just imagine it now. Like, what do you think of 5G? And you're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then when we talk, I was thinking like, you just love the gym. And he'd, he could do the worst exercise in the world. And you say, you know, that's probably not that great for your biceps. He wouldn't give a shit. He's like, I'm happy. And I'm like, you know what? Fair enough. I, I aspire to be that happy in the gym because he literally loves it. And Ign- I ignorance is bliss sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But he's in yeah. good shape, to be fair. He's in good shape. He's. I think there's a I lot. Think- I think as much as we all talk about optimizing tech stuff, right, which we're going to come on to later, <laughs> but I still maintain that even if you're just showing up and doing shit workouts, you're still going to make some progress. You're just oh, not going to def- make as much as, ever, as yeah. someone who's <laughs> has drilled down into the, you know, the micro. Yeah. Biotics uh, of but, it. But yeah. some people are happy with that. 
which is fair, fully respected. Not everyone's trying to make as much progress as possible. No. Some people, if you just, wanna, like I said, just want to show up. If you want to show up it. and do a full body workout five days a week, that's fine. Yeah. That's right. basically me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, yep, feel very seen there. But <laughs> at least something is better than nothing. Well, of course it is. Well, yeah, no, and that, I totally agree with what Chris is saying. Yeah. Like, you know, suboptimal is still getting some work done, isn't it? But, so. it's, but it's, I had this discussion with someone today who... Um, it basically wants to lose weight and they're moaning about the gym. I said, you don't have to go to the gym. No. You could do something else that you actually enjoy. You know, find something you enjoy that, that burns calories and maybe helps a little bit, like toning, like let's say swimming, if you enjoy that. You, all the stuff that's good stuff. You don't have to go to a gym and lift weights. The same way for cardio, you don't have to go to the gym and get on a treadmill for an hour. All the cardio I've done to drop fat, which I've done quite well for once, I've done through rock climbing and running and the running granted not everyone enjoys running but because I've kind of made it into a little personal vendetta to get better at it mm. I have enjoyed it because it's been a process for me whereas historically as I said before getting up at 6am to go get on a treadmill <coughs> for an hour I'm sacrificing my sleep to do that which is actually a stupid thing mm, absolutely and also it's fucking mind numbing and it eats into my day massively whereas getting up later in the morning and tracking on my runners to do maybe a th like 25 minute run get out in nature as well getting out fresh air mm. and it's also challenging my body a bit more it's improved my hip mobility through yeah, running yeah. so i've completely reversed all my thinking on you know cardio i mean yes granted if i was probably a stage bodybuilder like ryan's getting ready for his pro show at the weekend well, he's a bit heavy to run though is he so i mean boy <laughs> yeah so he's done a lot of steady state cardio he's like 100 kilos isn't he so and he has to stick with that because you know he has to do things precisely whereas for me personally being a very normal human mm. i can vary all that cardio and all my training and still get a very good result yeah yeah and that's like where you're doing the thing that suits you best because with him he's so big like yeah. if he did running that would probably ruin his knees which yeah. means he couldn't train his legs and then all of a yeah. sudden all that stuff yeah. you're in a negative it, at the end of the day points. I think pe people have this idea where weight loss is really narrow like there's a narrow approach to it saying you have to go to the gym you have to do this etc etc when in reality you like there are a lot of things you don't actually have to do. Granted, to lose weight, we know you have to be in a calorie deficit. But mm. outside of that, how you get there, there are no have-tos. You don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to do cardio. It's just good, better, best, yeah, like you even, optimal. Yeah, you don't even like have that, to eat it? less. You either have to move a lot more, mm. or if you don't want to move more, you have to eat eat less. It's like there are, there are so many ways to get around it. I think just be careful who you get your advice from. Because yeah. if you speak to some <clears throat> certain people, will tell you, say, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Just stick with us. And we'll keep it mm. simple. And with that, I think we should probably just start the fucking show. Let's go. Okay, let's, let's just do, do that. it. Howdy gang, we are back. What episode is it, Harry? Can you even remember that? Is it episode... Is it 13? 13, I believe it is 13. Uh, we've made it this far. It's me, it's Christy Fellows. It's him. Hi, I'm Harry. It's Harry and it's him. Hi, I'm Michael. And we're all here again for another... Hi, I'm Michael. ...fabulous Pump Fiction. Uh, we're excited to be back. We've been a bit delayed because we've been busy folks, but we're here and that's And all hopefully it. we're back in our routine now. Yeah. So we know when we're filming and it's going to be pretty consistent. We're going to we're going to get back to a routine we every other week. Promise. We promise. But um yeah, so we've got a show ready for you today. We're going to be talking about we're going to start with digestion today. I want to talk a little bit about some of the foods that you choose to eat uh, and probiotic vibes. I want to cover that. Uh, we you know, we're not nutritionist experts, but we can definitely still talk about that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, and else what else are we talking about, Harry? Got all sorts. We talk about the uh, optimization intensity argument and some supplements. Is there stuff. an argument about optimization uh, I think intensity? There could be, I think there could be. I an think argument. there needs to be. I think there could be. But it, maybe is it like celebrity death match between you two? No, Great we're, pro we're probably on the same. Yeah, classic. <laughs> we're probably on the same page. Well, we are yeah. on the same page. We had this conversation yeah. literally. Was it Monday? Yeah. Can't yeah. can't we be like <laughs> those radio shows where one presenter is purposely against the so other? You one's want opinion? me to be Piers Morgan? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh god. I mean, <laughs> if the cap fits, Michael. Hey, put your peers cap on. Don't do it. 
Um, but you wanted to talk about, what is it, tercasterone? So we've got well? tercasterone and test boosters, which is actually a topic I've covered on a video or in a video before. But we're going to elaborate on it here because it's very relevant to our next episode. Fine. Well, without further ado, then, we'll probably start on the digestion. Let's talk about right? poo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a big ah. fan of talking about your bodily functions anyway. I'm just a very open uh, like individual. The question is, right, what do you, do you consider your digestion... Uh, do either of you really consider your digestion with your daily eating habits at all? Sure. Yeah. So yes. A lot, a lot more than yeah. I used to as of recently. A lot more. And what, what would you say has triggered that? Uh, I just, especially when I was kind of powerlifting, but I would like in all honesty, I would eat like absolute shit. Calorie wise, very similar, but there it was very much chips and roast potatoes as my carb source, and nothing else, um, just because loads of calories, and then just eating a shed load of red meat. And because it's just easy calories, and um, also half tub of ice cream every night and a liter of whole milk. Sweet, nice. And I was thinking, you know what? I didn't feel very good. Like in, internally, I felt mm. I didn't. I felt iffy all the time. I, just, I always felt sick, and I just didn't feel well in myself. Mm. Then I thought I was normal. Then I realised actually, probably actually need to eat a bit better. And suddenly, oh, I feel a bit better. Mine but, was similar to yours, where it was my own gut that was telling me something so i cut yeah. some foods out for, i got sick and stopped eating certain foods and then i was like oh this is what it should feel like not <coughs> feeling bloated all the time yeah. like i want to take a crap all and the actually time. being able to eat meals more frequently because you're just not gassy it, and it, like yeah bloated. it's just it's going it's processing how it yeah. needs to process and more energy i don't yeah. have more energy when i cut foods Clear out skin as well i was like what the hell's going on i mean i think for me i mean unrelated to the probiotic t- topic that i will come on to whenever i start dieting and i simplify what i'm eating I'm actually able to eat a lot more simply because my body is processing it so much more efficiently. Yeah. Yeah, no, honestly, especially now I've kind of taken my food in, uh, a lot more seriously as of recently due to like competitive goals and whatnot. I find if I just kind of scale it back, make it pretty simple, I can be ready to eat again if I need to within two hours. Mm. And then, but I try and push it to three. But to say oh, I eat every three hours, most people, I can imagine that. But once you actually kind of nail what you can handle and what you can't handle, even small things like I know I can't digest eggs very well. So mm-hmm. whenever I, I could eat a meal, fine. If I add an egg to it, I will be full for six hours and I'll, I'll really struggle to eat again. Have you considered whether it's the yolk that's the plain? That's what I need to consider is what, what about the egg does it? And it's always been like that. It always makes me look like a little bit sick. Um, which is shameful. Sometimes I don't love eggs, but sometimes I do crave. It can eggs. be the whites as well. Sometimes I, I as would well. definitely try the whites simply because you, as a bodybuilder now, and when you get into position, egg whites are a very useful yeah. ingredient as a bodybuilder when you oh, start yeah. dieting. Oh, um, absolutely. So do do further that. What else was there? Something else I can't I can't remember. There was another thing I f- struggle with. Anyway, I want to talk a bit about probiotics. Go because obviously where having a, a healthy digestion is concerned. It's all about gut health and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And to maintain good gut health, you should be really looking at getting some regular foods in your body that contain probiotics uh, that will help you kind of regulate what goes on in your stomach and so on. Mm. Now, do you know any probiotic foods off the top of your head? I don't know any probiotic foods, but I know prebiotic (coughs) foods. See, do you know the difference between prebiotic and probiotic? So... A probiotic is the bacteria and a prebiotic is the food that feeds the bacteria. I did do a nutrition course quite recently. I just want to point out. (laughs) That's good stuff, man. Big brain. That's as far as it goes. Please don't ask any more questions. I mean, to be fair, I only only had to only look that up earlier today just to make sure. But um, yeah, that is exactly right. It's going to be an interesting conversation because from the reading I've done from it, I also asked my coach about this, who's a physiologist, because I got approached six months ago by quite a like known probiotic brand who now partner with Waitrose and they basically said we want to partner with you and our probiotic kit costs $120 but mm. and it basically tests your poo and we'll give it to your audience for $60 half price and every time somebody buys it we'll give you uh, £50. Well look if you want to get that involved in the podcast and we can all take a chip well, out I turn of that, them down. I turn them down. I, mean. I, I turned them down because <laughs> Look at I my said poo. <laughs> cause I spoke to my coach about it and he said and he we kind of both looked at it together because obviously he knows quite a bit about it he said there's so the research at this stage is too conflicting for me to fully invest my name onto onto Fair. something that I can't fully support mm. so like there is some research supporting probiotics mm. but there's also some research not supporting them and it, there's, there's too much conflicting evidence at the moment so I'm kind of like I kind of took a step back from that because if I'm going to associate TFNL with something it needs to be something that's that you I, believe I, in yeah, yeah. I believe in there's something that We've I, I, I that. think wouldn't be a waste of time for other people definitely so yeah. I'm actually interested to learn about what you've learned about probiotics because this will help me 
going forward. Well, look, I, I don't know a mass amount if I'm all honest. There, I mean, I, mean I can honestly say I don't know a massive <coughs> amount about it, but it's something that I've, I've started to believe more in and I've started to delve d- deeper into. Like I take a probiotic tablet every day as well just to make sure. But essentially, as Mike said, it is the kind of healthy bacteria that you're putting into your gut that helps you. Uh, re- so I'm going to go through some of the some of the it's be- much better if I just read some stuff yeah, out yeah yeah give us some facts so probiotics are live microorganisms uh, that can be consumed through fermented foods and supplements so it's very common in your fermented foods basically uh, more studies show that the bal- balance or imbalance of bacteria in your digestive system is linked to overall health and disease probiotics promote a healthy balance of gut bacteria and have been linked to a wide range of health, <coughs> health benefits that include they're beneficial for weight loss, digestive health, immune function, and more. In fact, I read a research mm. earlier today that said that there is some scientific evidence to say that they have benefits in regards to cancer prevention oh, and also depression as well because good gut health apparently has a knock-on effect with your mental state as well. Uh, there is actually some research, research supporting that. Um, it's more modern. I haven't looked massively into it, but I have heard mm. of it. I've had conversations with uh, my auntie who's a clinical psychology something. She's got a PhD in something to do with psychology. Fancy. And um, we had a conversation about it and she said there is more and more research coming out about the link between gut health and mental health. So just the, the subject on that. An increasing number of studies link gut health to mood and mental health. Both animal human studies find that probiotic <coughs> supplements can improve some mental health disorders. A review of 15 humans... A human studies found that supplementing with some very scientific words for one to two months can improve anxiety, depression, autism, obsessive compulsive disorder, and memory. Again, I, I think I can't really make too much of a comment no, of course actually, like, without reading of the course research. But if, if it is true, it'd be interesting, but I'm certainly keen to explore it's it inter- an opinion. Well, it's interesting the fact that, you know, even though we don't know much about it, the fact there's a lot of people pointing towards it mm. that suggests there think, is potentially a connection i think the wording is slightly iffy is that it says about like improving autism well, like, well <laughs> like, I, I don't think autism is something that, that yeah. it is that wait, does it make it wait we need like, to improve it like, but like it's something that i don't stronger? think i don't think asd so um autistic spectrum disorder is something that <laughs> no. needs to be improved yeah, I know, it's yeah. just, it, but anyway yeah, yeah. look i think it, it's a positive I, thing are they, are they almost that aligns things like autism in like a negative light when it's not yeah, negative? Yeah, sure. it's just it's, it's just, just it's just what it is yeah it's whether you are Six or one or six or two is just a part of you. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's what, interesting about the gut and the head because I, I think some like Eastern philosophies look at like you link your your mind, your heart, and your gut together. So this yeah, idea yeah. of like your gut feeling, I don't know how true this is, but I've heard it anecdotally where it's about when you have your gut feeling, it is actually your bacteria is talking to more bacteria of someone else's stomach. And that gut feeling, I don't know how true not, it not is, sure about that one. but you know, it's this <laughs> idea sure of, um, that's where it, that's where it ideally come from is this idea of like, we have these three minds and your intercept. gut is a mind. Harry, Harry has a lot of gut feelings in his toilet time. Yeah. Right? yeah. Honestly, horrendous. And apparently probiotics can help and prevent and treat diarrhea as well. So maybe that would be beneficial for you. Well, boys, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm going to contact them again. So boys, let's go again. The cancer one is interesting because oh, I should bring that up. Yeah. Because, um, with probiotics it helps with cells in the gut and obviously it, when yeah. cells deformed don't cells. F- are deformed that's yeah. where cancer can well kind of someone actually arise. presented again i don't know how true this is i don't know the statistics but i spoke to my friend who who is from india and she made a really good point actually saying she talked about it so you've got to think about it. indians typically love spicy food they keep their food very simple and very spicy absolutely love it and she basically said the like kind of the cancer rate in india is apparently like mortality from cancer is pretty low can like compared to obviously the western diets and stuff just like could there be something going on there could it be very diet diet related interesting but I, again, I, I don't know but i don't know if that's true i don't we, know we just think we haven't had to dose up with probiotics for like yeah. as a species have we so why has this occurred now western diet is horrendous yeah it's well that's what i'm saying all, it's stuff yeah, that's it's, taken out yeah, of food i think it, com- yeah, food, it comes down it? to the fact that modern diets aren't very good and yeah. no. it's only in only like historically when you know, when we were younger there was m- far much more variation in what our you know parents were feeding us and, mm. and, and what other countries were having the more and more now the the desire for cheaper, faster food has yeah. is affecting things massively, and it just tastes Definitely. so good. Oh, the, the other thing that's crazy, <laughs> it's true, it does, it, just, so it does taste so good. <laughs> yeah. Like even small things like you go to America and you have In and Out Burger, yeah. it's absolutely incredible, and it's so cheap. Well, five like, Guys, I love a Five Guys. I'm oh. not a big fan. I, I like. They're it. opening I a Five Guys near me, so that's good. Oh, here Winner's we go. Triangle. Peak bulk is coming. 
But like even small things like um, just keeping food simple, not mm. overcomplicating yeah. things. Like obviously, like flavors and stuff yeah. is cool. But in Northern Europe, like uh, well, well, where my dad lives in Estonia, they love fermented kind of vegetables yeah. and things like sauerkraut and stuff. Is like with every every meal. And yeah. I think that is also because they can't grow a lot there because of the climate, but also yeah. because it's cheap and it is actually so good for you. Yeah. And like their, their gut health and like their diets and stuff are awesome. But you, you don't see much obesity there. So I'm just going to go through some probiotic foods. Just so just to point out the fact that it can be consumed quite simply. Mm. Like, for yeah, example, yeah. sourdough bread is... A I f- love sourdough. It's, it's a ferment- I know you do as well. They're, it's from basically anything that's fermented. It's the fermentation that creates the bacteria because the whole way sourdough is made is by using a fermented uh, essentially you're making fermented flour yeah because there's no yeast in a sourdough bread that's why it's easier oh, yeah. to digest as well ah, I do I like know that. so if you I like if either. you if you like bread but you struggle with digesting it then sourdough is the way to go and that's why Whoa, that is Whoa. a t-shirt right there yeah I clip that rhyme guys hang on a second did I just create a rhyme you just M&M. Get, uh, M&M. we've M&M. done it he's that mum's spaghetti mum's spaghetti arm spaghetti um, okay uh, kefir Kefir? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I, oh, isn't it a yogurt type it's like thing? That like kind a milky of thing. South African milky thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it in the yogurt aisle. Uh, kombucha. Yeah, no worries. Which is nice stuff. Oh, that, we're not, I'm not cool enough to have kombucha. <laughs> Bit of booch. Cool. Get on the booch. Get on the booch train. Uh, kimchi. Yeah, very spicy. Blew my head off. Hate it. It doesn't have to be spicy. It's oh, just, I, again, it's just too ferment. much flavour for my poor fermented, self. I had, had it before and I had the whole tub and I was. Your not, bumhole must have been I dangerous. I had so much probiotics. Yogurt. Obviously, fermented yogurt. I like yogurt. And there's loads of other stuff. Pickled cucumber, which is gherkins, essentially. Gherkins. Oh, the water, the, the brine that you get with with gherkins is actually quite good. Cause yeah. Because a lot of the probiotics within the gherkins are still in that pickle brine. If you put that on oh. a salad, it'll give you very good. You, you know, when you have a salad, you have a vinaigrette and so yeah, on. Yeah, on it. sure. So if you want a low calorie dressing for foods and salads and so on, then pickled juice is actually quite good. He's looking at me like I'm insane. Disgusting. Um, miso soup. Cheeses, obviously, oh, uh, if you get fermented cheese. cheeses. Olives. Olives are probiotic as well. I do love yeah, an olive. I love olives. Uh, raw milk, although I can't say I'm ever going to have You can't milk. buy that. Yeah, you, uh, you, we're not supposed to better buy it. You're not allowed. I, think, I remember in America that you, it was like illegal to buy raw milk or something. It's got something to do with the bacteria in it, and that's okay. why they do what they do to our milk here. An- another thing on the list, which we have here... It's sauerkraut. Hey, there it is. SD. <laughs> I hate him. Are we trying some? Yeah, well, we all want good gut health. No, I don't. I can't even open it. Look how strong go. he is from the climbing. Let's have a sniff. I love it. I'm just thinking of your stomach, really. What does it smell like? It smells like Monster Munch. <laughs> I hate oh, I hate Monster Munch. <laughs> His face. I don't even want to look at it. Just fucking get over um, it. Another thing that I read about that's very good for settling the stomach and helping the stomach lining and digestion and all that sort of stuff. Is that what I'm putting in boiling water? No, no. It's this. It's mushroom tea. <gasps> oh, I've had mushroom tea before. Oh my before. God, is that chaga? <laughs> yes. Oh, so I have a lion's mane one and the chaga one is amazing too. There we go. So chaga tea is another thing that's really oh, good tea. for digestion. Well, I have, I've had um, mushroom coffee. Yeah, so this is, this is chaga I've tea. I've chaga tea. And I just thought all of us could have a little bang oh, yeah, and some chaga it's tea. Fa- I tell you what. Should we put it in the pot and then we can yeah, pour yeah, it yeah. out? So, you know what, last time I had mushrooms, I was in Amsterdam Should and we it double was very bang anticlimactic. It? There is no psychedelic properties to this, I'm afraid. Then I don't want it. <laughs> Whilst um, Crayola Mike makes the tea. Although that being said, when I did actually try truffles in that Sam, I got the strongest ones you could buy in the shop, and I got nothing from them. Took the whole the whole pack as well. You think I have a spoonful? I have a I have a nibble. Have some sauerkraut and feel good about it. I'm getting a banana ready to. So I'm the doing in- this for interesting you. Interesting thing about mushrooms, right? Yeah. Is they are closer to us than they are to plants because they don't That's photo, really photosynthesize their food. They have to eat things that I'm we do. Ready because I'm really bad with flavor. And there is a mushroom, boring fact, I'm that can eat radiation, and they've started to breed mushrooms which can eat plastic. Really so just quickly, whilst we're getting the chagas ready, uh, the f- I'll give you five little facts benefits of chaga tea. One, full of antioxidants. Oh, that's nasty. Full of. An- <laughs> Full of antioxidants. It's an, an immune system regulator. Like immune system regulator because it's rich in beta D glucans, which can help balance response to the body's immune system. It's antiviral. Um, there are studies that prove that benefits of chaga preventing herpes, apparently, which is good for you. <laughs> 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 That's irrelevant. Um, oh, stress relief. Sour banana. Stress relief because it's a, it's an adaptogen, apparently, which is good. It is. 
for all those things. And finally, helps your digestion, which is why I've got it. Because it supports healthy digestive functions. Its anti-inflammatory effects are used to helping alleviate inflammation in the stomach or intestines. I'm worried that the tea bag is torn in there. Oh, it's a bit of character building. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's um, fine. I don't mind um, it. I That was not nice, but it also wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. a fresh spoon? No, no. I didn't spoon it. He actually fucking fingered it. You fingered it. Yeah, because I'm not. I'm not. Look what at happened, this. What happened to good old? Man? What happened to good old fashioned fingering anyway? Uh, look at it. <laughs> this man. You see how much he put in his mouth. It's good for mm. you, right? Mm. It's cabbage. Mm. So yeah, guys, get on the. Um, There's Satan in front of me. I'm not. I'm not afraid to bang in some sauerkraut. So yeah, mushrooms are awesome. Lion's mane is really good for executive cognitive function. So I take lion's mane every morning. I ain't um, gonna lie. It's really good. That's actually really tasty. You should get on the lion's mane, Harry. I'm not religious, but Jesus is needed here. Got on the lion's mane. Would have made me good. Exorcism. Yeah. Lion's mane and alpha GPC. Are which sounds ready? like a robot, but I it's not. I was going to say... <laughs> that's, the, that's the third, Link it third Star Wars, isn't it? Yeah. Link it to me. Lion's mane's great. Where are you get from? Cord- from? Cordyceps. I'll send you a link. Cordyceps is really good for um, like energy. So if you don't want to have caffeine... I like their third album, actually, as well. I need that. <laughs> I don't have caffeine. Cordyceps. You don't drink coffee, do you? So you can also just get in tablets. Just no fun, no have, fun at all. I have no caffeine. I've never tried coffee. Uh, I've had you a don't like hot coffee. drinks, do you? No. I'm gonna have That's to, to what it is. I'm going to have to cut out... No, co- I, um, I like hot chocolate. Next week, I have to cut out coffee and other interesting foods because oh, I'm going to do a teeth whitening thing. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I have to have a white diet. Well. So all the food... I know, careful. it sounds a bit racist. Yeah. All the food I eat has to have of no colour whatsoever because it's to not Just follow my diet. <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Mate, turkey dinosaurs and waffles. <laughs> I, oh, honestly. It, when I was at like year five, if I went to my friend's house on a Friday night, they gave me turkey dinosaurs, waffles and baked do you know beans. What, do you know what banging. that's called? It's really bad. It's called, that's called a council state dinner. He I is very it. council state though. I love it. I absolutely... Honestly, turkey dinos. Don't mind if I diddly do. <laughs> All right, Ned. <laughs> We derailed the gut. Go back to the gut stuff. Yeah, so... My banana is providing that. Oh, you have broken the bag as well. So, we essentially, essentially, I just feel like we should all pay a little bit more attention to some of the foods that we're consuming in order to regulate better a better digestion. And I'm not saying that I'm going to start banging in loads of mushroom tea and sauerkraut all the time. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm going to bang in a bunch of shrooms. I, I've got to say, I do back the mushrooms that, that I have noticed a massive effect on my Can body. Can we get Harry a glass, please? I hate all it's of you. Bit, get that glass. It's a bit bitty. <coughs> Is it? Mm. Bitty. But it's Can only because br- the bag broke. Deal him in. To clarify, I will have a sip and then I'll complain about it for the next hour. Look. <coughs> oh, that's a big sip, Mike. Oh, my God. I want God. to see a full mouthful. Help me, please. Get it down. Get in the microphone, please. It literally looks like... It, it look, honestly, it looks like three flushes after Manchester. <laughs> Just floating bits. Do, deal me in, Mike. I'm not. I'm not afraid. Of, I'm not afraid of this. Do you, want a, do you want a big glass? No, just give me a, a normal amount. Do you want any ketchup? What's that? What's that? Going ketchup? Are you one of those people that's like, yeah, I love all kinds of food, See, and, then, and like then you that. watch them just put ketchup all over it? I'm like, so you're nah. basically eating ketchup with food. I don't. I don't use sauces. Rarely use sauces. Yeah, honestly, I just my I think it's because a lot of I think hear me out. A lot of kids when so they were younger were basically taught to mask food with ketchup, foods that they kind of tolerated. Mm. And I, I don't, I've never really, my mum never really encouraged me to put sauce on food. She kind of made me just eat the food. I realised I don't like anything. Then yeah, bit, drink drink your bit of mayo, it bit of mayo, bit of hickory barbecue. This doesn't taste I, of anything. I can bang a bit of barbecue, but mayo does. It does taste a bit like tea. Oh, when I was when I lived in Shanghai, I went to a tea ceremony. The weirdest hour of my life. It just tastes like sad water. Yeah. It tastes like worse water. I was kind of expecting it was going to taste a bit like a Campbell's cream of mushroom. Am I? Uh, wait, hang on a second, guys. Am I? Am I health and fitness? You are peak health and fitness I'm right now. I'm going to start selling. Glue anyway, burns. cheers, cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers to here's the tea. To, here's to gut health. So, um, in summary, I don't like it. Well, we know. Wait, we, three, two, one. We knew that was going to be your summary. Regret. Uh, so, in summary, um, for me, question the foods that you eat and maybe why you m- might not feel as great once you've had when, w- when you eat the way you do. Let's say if, if you've had a bad day of eating, you know the next day you're going to feel like shit, right? And the same day. And this, yeah. So, therefore, there's a direct correlation between the shit you're putting in your stomach. So, think about that. Seth Ferrosi actually did like a bit of an experiment on himself years ago. Oh, I shouldn't have done that tea. Where he basically uh, said he was having to, uh, 
some digestive issues. And then he was like, he stripped his diet back to literally chicken, rice, veg, six times a day. And then he would add different foods in. So he'd, okay, okay, instead of chicken for one meal, he had, he'd have turkey. Fine, he could digest it fine. Go around, then eventually he, he would add foods in until he found a food he couldn't digest. And then he removed that food. So for example, he can't do red meat. What are the signs that you can't <clears throat> digest something though? I, for me personally, it's bloat, gas. Mm. It's got a bit maybe funny bottom, and pooey. Um, and also, if I'm if I can't if I don't feel hungry. So like if I eat food mm. and I'm I, reduction. I, yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm normally full, but that lasts for an abnormal long amount of time. Like I can normally eat, like I said, within every three hours. But if it takes me longer than three hours to be ready to eat again, I think I can't digest that very well. I think your skin. <coughs> yeah, yeah, and then like yeah, skin. things like that as well. When Energy I, levels. When yeah. I clean up my diet, my skin is amazing. And whenever I go, whenever I'm near, when I'm near to Christmas, and I'm just letting it slide for oh, maybe oh, letting oh. it slide for two months, it's noticeable in so many ways for me. And Bit just, of lobster for Christmas. But I don't. I can't say whether obviously probiotics will help um, iron out those things. You can't just sling in a probiotic with a shit diet and expect it to work no. miracles. But it's a bit like what we talk about with training. If you optimize, do you want to optimize your digestion? Mm. Give uh, yourself the best chance of success. Yeah, I mean, so that so there's so therefore there's two things here. You can obviously take out the crap that you struggle with. That's a bit like your basic form of training, and then there's optimizing, whereby you're putting in more things to enhance it further. So your probiotics, and then having prebiotic foods, mm. which we didn't cover. But remember, big, big supplements are there to rocks. yeah. Supplements are there to supplement. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. It's in the name. And that's, it's on the tin. And that's why we have lists of foods that are naturally probiotic. And a good prebiotic is garlic. That's very true. I did have a list of prebiotics. Garlic bread. Well. Yeah. No, just the garlic. Garlic bread. And only bread that? if it's sourdough bread. Yeah. Imagine that. Garlic sourdough bread. Right? There we go. Pre and po- no, Pre- Pre- flavor. I love, Pre- I love sourdough bread. I, I, like, I, um, yeah, I like it. Pre and oh, po- Josh. Do you know really relevant to you when you just said that about optimization? That's great. That's actually oh, great. Well, seg- segue me in because this one I can chime in. Ronnie's going to segue us. Yeah, well, I'm also wary of the time because Mike has to go teach a class very shortly. So I want him to be able to chime in on this conversation. Mike's got another 12 <coughs> minutes, I reckon. He can go at 20. I, I can go. I can go at 20. So, so we've got, t- we got, we got until 25 past to nail this topic. So the argument of optimization and there's a lot of people very unhappy with it. A lot of people love it. I mean, I myself, I do love it. A lot of people unhappy with it. They say too many people worry about optimization when they don't just train. I want to talk about that. So essentially optimization is, in the term we're going to talk about, is optimizing training variables, specifically a movement selection, to choose movements that could potentially be better for you than other movements and why that is a thing and our problems or a potential problem surrounding that. This looks stronger tea now, by the way. I know the bag has really gone for it. <laughs> it's still just the same taste, so it's fine. I'm just going to be... So, I'm, I'm climbing tonight. I'm going to be fucking flying up that wall with this mushroom tea, I reckon. You're going to be so... Shut you'll be, you'll be see, you're going to be hearing colours. So, optimization. <laughs> in my mind, right, I guess I'm so old school with my training, just through who I've been mentored by for years that i just shut up and train most Mm. of the time and and i guess through knowledge in my own way i am optimizing myself through exercise selection but what you're saying is a lot of there's a lot of people out there who may be relatively new to it that are focusing too hard on optimization too early on i think it's it's i think too many people are focusing because obviously i'm all for optimization i love I love my optimized training. You are one of the most <coughs> optimized people I know. This guy. But I've also been your doing opt- this for... Your optimized prime. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's good. But I've also been doing this for many, many years. I think like, I love my creators. I like listening to like what Paul Carter says, Ryan Jewers, people like that, Mike Isretel. But ultimately, a lot of people kind of get caught into that, which is fantastic. But they neglect to understand the bread and butter. They're getting the filling with no no bread and butter. And essentially, you can optimize all you want. You can choose the best movements in the world. But if your intensity is lacking, your load management is lacking, your recovery is lacking, all these things are going to kind of hone in on intensity. If that, if that's lacking, you're not going to get shit from it. Like you can have the best movement in the world with, let's say, you're going to seven reps in reserve, so intensity is in the pan. You're not going to get a lot from it. You have the worst move in the world, taking two, if not close to failure, probably going to get more from it. So it's, mm. I think optimizing movement selection is something you need to consider once you can tick all the other boxes. Like, is Definitely. your intensity there? Yeah. Sufficient volume? All these things. And then you think about, okay, 
now I can look at optimizing this movement. Now I can focus on iliac fibers. Now mm. I can do this and this. I, I think you know to I mean? kind, of, kind of add to that <clears throat> is on the content side of it is talking about who is that content actually for? Mm. Because I think all the content, every exercise has a value, right? And yeah. that, that's why sometimes I get a bit upset I get upset, maybe it's not the right word. I'm getting a bit angry when I yeah. see people like that. That's a crap movement for back. I'm like, well, it has some value. It does yeah. something. I don't think anything's necessarily a bad movement. No. I think it may not be as good for what it's intended for, but it could Definitely. be better. For, lat pull down, for example. Yeah, yeah. Standard wide grip lat pull down. It's probably not as good for the lats as you might think, but it's it's actually pretty good for the mid back. Yeah. yeah, it's a really. I'm I'm going to start doing them as well because I think for other reasons, I think it's a pretty good movement actually. Yeah. And it's that content <clears throat> that you see, like Paul Carter and all these guys that are, you know great content. Who are they actually talking to? Are they talking yeah. to probably people closer to yourselves, or are they talking yeah. to like these kind of slightly newer trainers who are in in getting into the industry, getting into their own training, who have not really moved the big rocks yet? They've there not are, really found their feet. Yeah, there are certain movements which I would lean more towards being like less favourable. Yeah. Again, obviously, especially look at hypertrophy, things like mm. goblet squats and Arnold Press, essentially just really limiting. You can't load them as no, much. No, you do not at all. But then flip it around, could there, arguably, could there be a benefit to Arnold Press for other goals? external? Maybe, I don't maybe, really know. Maybe, yeah. I'd probably lean towards more no, because yeah, you would. don't really need to. That's probably a move I, I would say is probably, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's yeah. bottom of the list. Well, integrating those two yeah. things together, don't whereas, like, you can separate them yeah. more out of it. Whereas goblet squats, you can maybe argue, actually, it could have some benefits for just teaching people to maintain more of an upright yeah. torso when doing squatting, especially if they've got poor thoracic mobility, things like that. Good for front squat regression. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you like, especially yeah. like really early on you may not be able to front squat effectively like i said chuck a goblet squat in there yeah, get yeah. a movement then go to front then do this again hypertrophy probably pretty crap but for yeah, other yeah. benefits let's say like i said regressions and whatnot probably more of a consideration and it could be good for someone at the beginning of their training yeah, that's one thing more beginning yeah. of people but that, that will run out that road yeah. will end quickly that, before they need to do something more training wheels yeah i think maybe what might be useful for people is actually if there was almost like a list of exercises that suited people in different stages of their journey. So like, yeah, for example, yeah. if you wanted to squat, like you were saying, mm. and you'd never done it before, you wouldn't start someone straight on a standard squat. You'd probably start with like, you know, you'd work through the the basic stuff, like like you say, the goblet squats and things like that and, mm. and progress through different movements and so on. But then suddenly you start getting into the more complicated end of things. You get people who who turning up and they've, they're training with someone who knows a lot or they've read something and they end up trying to do the optimized stuff when they haven't really worked through those basics to get to that Graduations. point. It's like a belt system, right? I yeah. heard this on a, another podcast where they were talking about if training and trainers went through like a belt system. Yeah. I mean, we are really meant to be the gate, as coaches, we're meant to be the gatekeepers of these exercises and we can look at someone and say, I don't think you're quite ready for that yet. Try this yeah. and then move to this when you're ready. Yeah. But I think we've been devalued because the internet now has allowed everyone to be a coach. An expert. An expert, yeah. I had to sit at a client's office today where this old guy who clearly hadn't he's a big dude um overweight and clearly you like has been to the gym like in years gone by and he just sat there like he's one of these really noisy people in the office telling people what they should be doing with their training and their diet and he doesn't currently go to a gym and he's clearly out of shape he admitted to drinking uh, a f like four pints of milk a day because he loves milk and shit like that. And I'm thinking, jealous. Why? Well, yeah. <laughs> why? Why? Like, <laughs> why are there these these people that exist that feel that they can just be the the you know? Yeah, but I see it on the gym floor. The authority on yeah. these things. And this is the problem because yeah. all it takes is someone, some misinformed individual to be have the confidence to be so forthright with what they're saying that people around them will go, have you spoken, have you, John really knows, you should talk to John, John knows what he's talking about. It's the whole conviction it, he'll, thing, he'll help you. It? He'll help you lose that weight for your holiday. It's yeah. things that, at the end of the day, if you're doing something and you're happy, I fully support it. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I respect anyone who's just, just doing, even just exercise, I don't care if it's crap or not, in my opinion. We, I just want you, we as love long as you're just happy. seeing people there yeah. in enjoying what they do because ultimately that's why we're there but i think a lot of times at times it's don't overcomplicate things yeah make sure like like i said i love in, i love optimization it's it's a bit of me i love it but may, maybe learn how to train with intensity before you worry about optimizing and maybe learn how to train with good technique and all the other yeah, things yeah, we're only doing i think it's all well and good to say train with intensity but only train with the intensity if the technique is there. Yeah, yeah, I think intensity and technique need to be... Use those as like the markers. Like as soon as those things break down, then the intensity is, is You've basically much. just got CrossFit. Yeah. Ooh. Well, yeah. Ooh, that was Ooh, a good touch careful. Of another. But it's one thing, if you can nail like, see, I go into the gym. 
my intensity is there I, I smash it consistently i know i know where my failure point is and i can get close if not to it every time laughing my technique's on point doesn't break down all that solid stuff then you can go okay now what movements are better because like mm. i said earlier you have the doesn't matter if the movement's the most optimal movement in the world if you can't train in the hypertrophy zone you're not going to grow or you're going to really limit your progression Definitely. so you need to nail that first before you can think about okay now how can i make this even better yeah and optimization the people have this idea is some people have this idea that optimization means it's gonna be a million times better than what you're already doing optimization just means it's probably one of the better options when looking at like fiber recruitment for example but that better option could one percent better it, that technically would be more optimal it's not necessarily hundreds of percent better it sometimes it really is as minor as a, a singular that's, that you yeah. like most people wouldn't even it wouldn't even be relevant wouldn't even, wouldn't even register it wouldn't would it? even be relevant yeah. but if you're looking at especially like to really take your train to the to the to the max we'll say then sure i mean like you probably want that extra one percent because it adds up but if, if it's not that deep for you then you don't need to it's, worry about it's it it's almost like you go too optimal but at the cost of what yeah and then if you lose intensity in that way and like the, i heard again on another podcast i heard this idea of like the gap between nothing and suboptimal is massive yeah but the yeah. gap between suboptimal and optimal is tiny yeah so at least just like you guys have been saying just get something done yeah. and try and do it the best you can and yeah. improve and, and also, then go from there i'm not like i'm not saying that every time you leave the gym you should feel exhausted because ultimately no not at all you shouldn't but you should at least walk out of that gym feeling like, okay, I feel good. I fuck. I I I ticked everything off, mm. and I pushed myself. And I've, I'm walking out of that gym with my head held high because I didn't spend ages chatting, and I setting up the cable. I I, I, <laughs> I got everything done that I wanted to do, and I and I felt like I gave it everything I could without killing myself. Fair. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the things. That, another thing with optimization is, and says, oh, this movement's optimal. Why? Well, yeah. Oh my God, the whole borrowed yeah. knowledge thing. Go ahead. Why? It, it winds that, me up. To oh, because because this person said it is. But, but I'm not disagreeing. But do you know why? I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do it, whether you know or know why it's optimal or not. But it benefits you to learn because you can actually apply that principle to so many other things. Even like line of pull when looking at like fiber division of the lat. If you can think about why this may target the iliac fibers, you can think about well, what other movements could also do that. But mm. Then flip around, what's the opposite? What could target like thoracic fibers? It's like, oh, wow. You think about like arm angle and everything. Suddenly, you, yeah, you're, yeah. you've almost opened up your, your realm of knowledge to like lat training exponentially just from a simple understanding of why something may be optimal. One thing I want to say with that is actually is when you actually when you when you spend a little bit of time looking at direction of pull yeah. and uh, muscle fiber recruitment you actually begin to understand what con will constitute a well-rounded workout yeah, so definitely. let's say yeah. someone turns up to do a back workout and they've got various machines there may be a handful of machines and exercises that are simply just doing the same thing as you were doing. Just on a different machine. Just on a different machine. Exercise redundancy. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, yeah, yeah. you may walk out of there having like only worked, let's say, the middle of your back and not your lats. Or you may have just done a workout which is only working the lats and not the middle of your back. If you can spend a little bit of time looking at the specific fibers the directions mm. you should be nailing you can go into you can plan a workout which covers every angle with the most efficient method yeah i think yeah. it's one of the things of saying well let's look at bodybuilding for example you want to look at like a complete chess workout realistically you only need three movements for a really effective chess workout and if you want to be really anal with it you look at fiber divisions of, of the pec you look clavicular sternal costal choose a movement for each clavicular being typically an incline press yeah. something similar so i'm sorry a mid press and then obviously like a, a dip for example yeah, for yeah. example for a fossil just suddenly classic. you've literally nailed upper, upper middle and lower chest yeah, done you, you've nailed it and then suddenly it's, when you make it that simple you're like shit and i but then mm. you fall into the gap like, oh but i want to do an incline press and incline fly it's like you, you can of course but, you can. but now you're yeah. not potentially i mean if you really want to be optimal are you not potentially neglecting placing more emphasis on the division of the and, like pet divisions that and have I, been neglected i think that people place too much weight on the fact that there's actually a difference between a fly and a press as to what it does to the muscle i think realistically a fly is just a very shit version of a press yeah, so uh, a dumbbell fly i want to clarify yeah, yeah. a dumbbell fly because if you think about a dumbbell fly versus a dumbbell press you are doing the same thing but you're greatly reducing the amount of load you can use therefore a dumbbell fly isn't it, the it's tension not, yeah it's not have, my preferred yeah. movement but a cable fly, or like a pectin fly, much better, consistent. Uh, but if all you have access to is dumbbell fly, it's better than nothing. Still do it. Yeah. I'd rather, like, yeah. do you mean, no one's going to do 10 sets of dumbbell press. No. Just, just quickly, I would, just, just to say, I would probably agree with you. 
I would do a cable fly because the reason why I think it's better, and you probably agree, is that with anything with a dumbbell, gravity plays a big role. Huge role. Definitely. There's nothing here. Yeah, I was going to say, when you're here... And that's why yeah. we say that. So if, if you do a cable fly, then you're getting a consistent force and pull through yeah. f- from start and, to and, finish. And then when you look at programming and you're time poor and you need yeah. to get out in and out of the gym, you're going to yeah, want to yeah. do the things that most bang for your buck. Absolutely. I, yeah. lo- I love cables for that for that yeah. reason I it's think very yeah, versatile correct. and the other thing you consider is length and short term position of the muscle dumbbell press very typically length and position dominant dumbbell fly would also be length and position dominant because of gravity because you've got nothing that's short and position but a cable fly could depending on how you do it be very short and position dominant so you know you're yeah. worried about a length and tick, position tick. dominant and a short and position yeah. dominant movement I'm not saying you need to but if you really want to optimise you yeah. tick both those boxes and it like if you actually think about it like even optimizing shit once you actually understand why you're doing what you're doing which is obviously the conversation we often have where you speak about like but why are you doing that yeah, yeah. once you understand it's actually really simple it is like it really is as well but it sounds really so complicated when you speak about fiber divisions yeah it's so you, yeah chris simplified earlier upper mid, upper middle lower done you yeah. think about okay length and shorten and press fly what? that's why it gets so frustrating when i hear on the gym floor they're like why are you doing that movement? It's not It's not so good line of pull or like the strength curve. I'm like, yeah. one, I enjoy doing it and two, it must yeah. do something because yeah. it's a staple that's been in bodybuilding it's longer than... It's been here forever. It's a strength training longer than we've been alive put together. Yeah. So yeah. it must do yeah. something. So to say it's redundant is, yeah. is naive and very short-sighted. And, and sometimes you don't have to do the most optimal movement in the world. Some movements I do, which I know are not optimal, but like you yeah, said, I just, love them. I love them. A yeah. lap pull down, even for let's say mid-back, I think there could be better movements out there. Yeah. But I love a good lap. I haven't done one for so long and I, I love it because I, do, I just enjoy the movement. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. really good movement. And you got to enjoy your training, haven't yeah. you? I look forward to doing it because yeah, I haven't yeah. done it for so long. It's, it's, it's almost like takes it back to the olden days, you know. Yeah. Let me know when you do it. We'll come watch and uh, do a little moment, yeah, no, a little film for Instagram. Because I'm doing lap pull downs. Well, there you go. So, in summary, um, anyone want to summarize? Well, I think it's it summary, ain't that deep, guys. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, literally, it's um, fully back optimizing optimizing your training, but don't neglect, don't use optimization as an excuse to skimp out on intensity. Fundamentals. Yeah, yeah, and also. If you're going to optimize something, it is probably a good idea understanding why. Because if you try and teach someone, you can help them and also help yourself. Mm. That's why I like a lot of the creators I follow, like Ryan Dewars and like Mike Isertel, because when they they tell you something, they also explain because. Yeah. There's not just a do this. They say do this because, and then you're like, oh, okay, that's yeah. pretty cool. Like, for, it helps you understand. They teach you. For me, it'd probably be yep. Everything you just said. Um, understand why. And then the follow-up question is like, how then it applies to you? Yeah. And that also follow-up question to that is, does it apply to the person you're telling yeah. it to? Yeah, yeah. Um, every exercise has value. So don't just write something off just because yeah. someone on Instagram tells you this is the most optimal thing. Yeah. It's like, we'll have a look around, understand exercise. And if you don't know, ask someone trustworthy. The someone is, with the, the receipts. I guess the, the final, like, just tiny little point is, op- again, it's optimal for who? Optimal for what goal? Like I said, we could talk about optimal for hypertrophy, oh but God, if we're optimal for CrossFit, absolutely not. It's yeah, like yeah. What we're saying is pretty re- like redundant. So again, it's, it's contextualized. Yeah. What yeah. are you? Why are you here? What are you yeah. training for? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Start yeah. there. O- optimal <laughs> yeah. falls into it's an umbrella. Optimal yeah, yeah. for so many different like branches of the tree. We'll say. So yeah, well, there you go. I love it. Right, I'm with gonna, that. I'm you need to, to go do your. I'm going to dip out. God, just uh, let me know what you think of this next bit. Um, this is that. a uh, this is a pump fiction first we're having Mike leave the show he's allowing me and Harry to wrap up it's been oh, a long that's fine. day without you my friend okay. the fans need me guys we're doing yeah. squats testing today so oh, wow. a bit I of like maxing out get, some, get bigger I try do you want some music to walk out to or? please I won't hear it obviously once headphones okay. go off but you guys can just sing it Batista's theme tune that's why he has to leave actually He's actually Batman. Imagine. He's oh, had the, the bat signal in the sky. Where's the money? I want it. He's got a lot yeah. Bruce Wayne's got a lot of money. Wait, my banana before we get on to the next topic. Okay, well, we're going to say goodbye to Michael now. Bye. Miss he you. Can't, he I'll can't see hear you the music, but never mind. Here, see you later, babes. We miss you already. Lo- love you too. Yes, yes mum. You can trust us. Don't worry. I do trust you. All right. First mistake. Bye. Let's wave him off. Bye, Mike. We miss you already. Bye. Love you. Okay, let's set that off. Right, fuck it. He's gone. Right, let's talk about him. Hello. Let's talk about him. Come on. He's got a great hairline. <laughs> yeah, we love him, really. Mm. Um, yeah, so good stuff. All right, uh, just quickly, it wouldn't be right. Yeah, buddy!
Okay, a uh, little final subject that Harry wanted to take on on his own anyway. So this oh. is this is him on his so- oh. So- oh. soapbox oh, right I'm now. Dumped in. I didn't think I was going solo. Yeah, well, well, you're going to have to help me here. What the fuck do I know about turkesterone other than the fact that it sounds like it's from Turkey? Is it from Turkey? I don't know. I don't think so. It is <laughs> essentially, basically, I spoke about this in a video, but turkesterone is a new supplement that's kind of kind of dominating the market. It seems heavily pushed by people like Greg Desset, you know, Coach Greg. Yeah. Um, I, 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 he, I had the conversation. Is he basically speaks about how he's a hyper responder to it, but if you don't respond to it, it's not because it doesn't work. It's because you're a non-responder. That's I think it's just that's sneaky marketing. I would say. He's kind right. of basically, he's back. basically trying to say you should try it just in case it does work. Give me money, please. And um, essentially what it is, is a supplement that is apparently kind of produced to have anabolic-like properties. So it's almost like a legal but less effective, but also Is it a bit safer. like a SARM kind of thing? They, they marked it as like a, a safer alternative to steroids, when in reality, there's actually no research supporting it. And also to that, there's, there's no alternatives to steroids. But I think we could be pretty confident. Hang on, saying, hang on, hang on. What about BCAAs? Oh, well, that's another question. Um, but it's one of those things that like, it's just another supplement that's kind of taking the supplement industry by storm with a lot of false promises because it's heavily marketed and supported by TikTok influencers oh, who are getting okay. a lot of money from doing so. And the reality is it's not going to make or break your physique and there's a high chance it probably won't do anything for you. It's very similar to test boosters, which essentially are natural supplements you can take to boost your testosterone. Even if they did work, let's say they did boost your testosterone by 10%, that's not a lot. 10% when it comes to performance, let's say in like hypertrophy, you're not going to notice the difference. I mean, that's like the kind of... It's it's like optimizing again, isn't yeah. it? Really? Yeah, you're not going to notice the difference. And do you know what a really good way of boosting your testosterone naturally is? Sleep. Sleep better, eat better, train better. Like All these things, it's live, be- live a better and more sustainable lifestyle. Okay, so the cut and thrust is testosterone. Just don't bother. Basically, supplements, uh, most of them, you probably don't need them. Uh, creatine monohydrate is a pretty good one. I'd choose that over testosterone and test boosters because it's backed by science and it's also significantly cheaper. Well, it's getting more expensive. Well, now it's a bit of a joke, but yeah. It's the cost of supplements, guys. I mean, the cost of food in general, but supplements. Bloody shambles. So it's, a, it's a joke, frankly. It's a joke. I'm sick of it. Absolute joke. Um, but yeah, okay, fine. Happy yeah, with that, that. I think that's just... A, I wanted a quick set because... Why, why, are we, why are we talking about it? Go on, set, set. The reason that we are talking about helping testosterone boosting and performance enhancing, Harold, yeah. is because the next episode... We go deep. How deep? Deep down, dark. We open the trap door. Oh. We step down deep inside the well, mm. the well of dark things. What dark things? The very dark things that happen to be performance enhancing drugs. Drugs. So, we said it before in a previous show, but we are dedicating, I can't believe I'm saying this, an entire, an entire show to drugs and that's what I've always aspired to do. Mum would be so proud. <laughs> I mean, I'm ex- I'm excited to learn. I'm I'm probably going to walk away from that show wanting to take drugs. <laughs> but I hope, like, <laughs> that's a, that's a slippery slope. Uh, yeah. As a as a as, so as a man who's approaching forty rapidly, I'm thirty eight in September. I uh, you in know better I've, shape than most. I'm I'm happy with the shape I'm in. I always set out to look good naked, and I feel like I'm doing okay at that. Thankfully, in my own mind, if you feel good about yourself and you look good naked, then you've kind of won the battle in my opinion um but i've always have been on the quest for improving and i feel like i'm at a stage now where i'm kind of not likely to get much better than i am now so therefore my my curiosity surrounding performance enhancing drugs has always been there um so i'm interested and i'm not saying i'm gonna do anything but i am interested as 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 someone in it i feel like i feel like if you get to my stage in in a training career you may have almost earned the right to to question that i feel like where performance enhancing drugs are bad is because percentage wise young guys in the gym now the amount taking them is scary and the amount they're taking as well is scary like even i've had literally 15 year old kids come up to me in the gym saying what do you think about me taking (sighs) steroids i say you know what Come back to yeah, you when you've done t- fucking in, yeah, 10 years of in work. In 10 years' time, if through that 10 years you consistently still want to take them and you've nailed everything for 10 years, then then we'll, then you could talk about it. But until then, stop it. Behave yourself. Um, in other news, I've just had a message from oh, Michael saying that the T has done something to his brain. Am I going to have a 
a bad time now i well you barely had any so um there you go but anyway wait so what does he mean what does he mean he just says my brain i mean i'm confused what's your mean i'm, I'm worried about him now if i'm honest I, forgot to put, I didn't i meant to put a question mark there but i put a comma instead and i'm really upset yeah so a uh, big episode coming up soon guys um to also to clarify before we get into it, we are not doctors no. We 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 don't know a lot compared to a lot of people. We probably know more than the average gym goer, probably more than most, but we're certainly not saying we know loads. We're just giving our opinion from what we do know. It not may not necessarily be correct, but it's from what we've learned through research and experience. Or experience. That's or, where we've yeah. always come from on this show. At the end of the day, we we are not the you know the be all and end all. We are not the authority on things, but we can just share what we know, our thoughts on things. And, and if you choose to listen, that's great. If you choose to take what we say to you and do your own research, that's even better. Which is what we would probably recommend is just yeah. take everything and just run with it and see what you come up with. Absolutely. And on that note, I think um, that just about sums up another Pump Fiction. As always... I need a wee. He needs a wee, as always. Uh, and secondly, as always, do contribute to this show and do ask us questions. Do tell us the topics you want us to talk about. The means to do that is via our Instagram, which is Pump Fiction Pod. Follow that. Click on the link in the bio to contribute to our form where you can submit all your questions, topics, and confessions if you have any crazy stories that you've witnessed. And other than that, follow me, Christy Fellows. Follow him, Harry, Harry underscore, underscore TFNL. TFNL. And, Harry, and follow the ghost of uh, Michael Carter by it's uh, radical.mike. That's the one. And that is just about it for now. And this has been another lovely show. Unfortunately, we've we've lost our third leg, um, but he will be back, as will we, as we delve deep, deep down dark. Into drugs. Into drugs. Cold. And that is about that. Bye. Good night. Bye.